Is Tarantino completing his blockbuster trilogy or going back to his roots, or both? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Hateful Eight. Okay, everybody, hear this. I'm taking this woman to hang. Rewards $10,000. That money's mine, boys. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Hold on! You think I'm in cahoots with that fella or her? That's my problem, boy. I don't know. One of them fellas will kill everybody in here. Now we're talking! As Quentin Tarantino has admitted, Grindhouse was his come-to-Jesus moment when he realized his relationship with his fans was a two-way street and they would not blindly go and see whatever movie he decided to make. Tarantino also admitted that while movie studios had gotten the message he only wanted to direct his own scripts, after Grindhouse, offers to direct other scripts started to come in, meaning that Hollywood knew he was in dire need of a comeback. And sure, Tarantino could have directed someone else's script, joined a franchise. But instead, he not only rode his way back into the hearts of his fans, but reached new heights by reaching new fans. Yes, they say go big or go home, and faced with the very real possibility of going home, Tarantino went big. Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, Tarantino more than doubled his standard budget and saw tremendous returns. Both flicks dominated at the box office, making hundreds of millions of dollars worldwide, and were also not only award contenders, but award winners. And while The Hateful Eight is a smaller picture, a $40 million budget and only one real location, it's still grand in that it's almost three hours long and features an overture and an intermission. Yeah, that's kind of cool. But there's a lot of uncool things about The Hateful Eight as well. First off, it's very low on star power. Sure, Tarantino made a big deal about casting Bruce Dern hot off of Nebraska and still cast him after accusing Dern's agents of leaking his script. And Jennifer Jason Leigh does have awards buzz, while obviously everyone enjoys Samuel L. Jackson in a Tarantino movie. But Kurt Russell, Walton Goggins, Demian Bashir? Sure, there's a rumored Channing Tatum cameo, but this year's holiday movie season is competitive. And Tarantino is without his lucky charm, Christoph Waltz. Then, well, like many Hollywood stars, Tarantino's personal politics seem to be in danger of derailing his career, or at least causing him to hit a serious speed bump. He spoke out recently at a rally against police brutality, where his comments were interpreted as calling all police officers murderers. But while Tarantino has tried to clarify his comments, police unions have insisted that they were still inflammatory, and several police unions nationwide plan to boycott the hateful eight. Plus, news reports have come out that Tarantino's longtime claims that he served several days in jail in Los Angeles before he became famous are false. So ironically, for a guy who loves to talk and writes great dialogue, is all this chatter going to take down Tarantino's return to his more artistic niche side? The Hateful Eight was a very unique and actually at the end of the day, awesome movie going experience. But whoa, oh, it was a roller coaster ride. The movie started out, uh, it's in two halves, deservedly so, because the two halves are, uh, well, let's just say there's a tonal shift. But the first half of the movie is like a Hitchcock Western, and that is as awesome as it sounds. But then the second half explodes violently uh, in old school Tarantino style. Just, you know, the depths of human depravity, uh, which really caught me by surprise, by the way. This movie surprised me in a number of ways. It's a very good mystery. I didn't see a lot of the twists and turns coming. Uh, that's the Hitchcock aspect there. Uh, wonderful uh, execution of suspense throughout the film. But then also, I had no idea just how horrible the characters in this movie truly were. And it shocked me. But I think in a way that was earned. So while I was watching the movie in the second half, well, actually, at the end of the first ha uh, half, things really start to go south. Uh, I was like, hmm, I think you might have gone too far, Tarantino, especially for a movie that comes out on Christmas Day. Uh, I really, truly was disgusted and appalled. However, the movie, and there's a however to that, to Tarantino's credit. The movie is so well made and so masterfully done uh, that it's haunted me. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. And even though my initial reaction, again, was one of disgust when the movie was over, I think it's one of the best movies of the year, actually. And I'm still thinking about it. I'm still not quite sure what Tarantino, you know, what he was trying to 
um, get across here. I guess it's like a really good almost abstract painting that you're like, I sense depth here and that there's like a message, but you know, it's pulling me in and I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So it actually, The Hateful Eight, by the way, spoiler alert, my top 10 lists for the year are coming out later this week, but The Hateful Eight made my top 10 movies of the year. That's how much I was enthralled by the film. It's very unique. Uh, it starts out, by the way, with an overture and then it has an intermission, like super old school. And that, of course, is indicative of epic movies, right? And even though The Hateful Eight takes place in just two locations, it's very much like a play. It takes place in a stagecoach and then Minnie's haberdashery, this like uh, Old West pit stop. It's totally worthy of the overture and the intermission because it still manages to be epic. But with those two locations, by the way, that allows Tarantino's writing and his cinematic flourishes to really take center stage. And oh boy, is he flush with both. Uh, it is just such a masterfully uh, made film. Again, as I said, it's just, it's a, it's a Valentine, as Tarantino's films all are, uh, to cinema. And I thought it was well written, incredibly well written, incredibly well acted. Everybody here does a good job across the board, a true ensemble. It was also uh, incredibly well shot, amazing cinematography. And now I know, by the way, uh, when the Golden Globe nominations came out and this was nominated for best score, I said, well, I'm not really familiar with the score that were nominated, either I haven't seen the film or they didn't stand out. Well, now that I've seen The Hateful Eight, it deserves to win best score. It's that good. Now, I have to warn you, Tarantino, as I said in my open, has won over a lot of new fans as of late with his more mainstream films, Glorious Bastards and Django Unchained. But I'm telling you that this is not that kind of a mainstream film. It has the slickness, but it is much more of a throwback to his early days when he really made a name for himself. So, I mean, there's something to that formula. Uh, but I'm talking like Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. So, you know, it, it has the slickness of those films, but again, it's... It's gonna throw you a, uh, throw you for a, a curveball if you really only are familiar with Tarantino's last two more mainstream films. However, that said, I still recommend that you go and see this. Just prepare yourself. And I have to say, the violence in the movie, while not only horrific and bold, really also was sad. You know, we see a lot of violence in movies, but Tarantino. There's a scene in the second half which just was gut wrenching. I wanted to save the people who were killed. I, it just broke my heart. And at first, again, that was one of those elements where I was like, I think you went too far. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, hey, you know what? In a very short amount of time, Tarantino was able to make me care that much. So uh, we've been talking a lot lately about whether or not, you know, plot twists and uh, certain things in movies, I don't want to give any spoilers away, are earned. Uh, but I think you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the biggest movie of the year that's currently playing in theaters. But while that seemed a little bit to me at least like a plot device, The Hateful Eight is just so organic and so well constructed and so just top to bottom, so masterfully done that I have tremendous respect, even though this isn't a road I normally would go down. You know, I'm not a big horror fan. Uh, you know, uh, the, the depths of human depravity don't really uh, fascinate me. But still, Tarantino did such a good job and was so stylish and so interesting that I enjoyed the trip, even though it's a journey I wouldn't normally take. So I actually really liked this movie, and I highly recommend that you see it. Just prepare yourself uh, and make sure you have a strong uh, disposition. But I mean, come on, if you like Tarantino, if you like Hitchcock, if you like Agatha Christie, if you like Westerns, there's just so many aspects of film that, again, this is a Valentine too, that I think it's gonna, some people might not get it, but I think for the people who do, it's gonna really thrill you as it did me. So that's my review of The Hateful Eight. Have fun, enjoy it. It is an epic film and, uh, you know, get a cozy seat and really settle in for that overture and intermission and just enjoy it for, for what it is. And I think, I hope, I, but I believe you will be as impressed as I ultimately was. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review of The Hateful Eight and you can check out some other episodes right now.